Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about why we need art, and I'm going to be drawing this. I recently watched Gremlins for the first time, well, first time with my kids, and it must have been the first time I had seen that movie since I was very, very young. Um, I was really fascinated by it. It starts out as this horror movie, and somewhere in the middle, it flips around and becomes something completely different. Um, how I would label that is kind of tricky. I mean, the closest thing I could compare it to would be one of those Looney Tune shorts where like Elmer Fudd is hunting Bugs Bunny, and Bug just harasses him the whole time. And the really old... Uh, Daffy Duck cartoons, it was, it was this kind of the same formula, like Daffy back when he was more like wacky, was just like harassing a, a hunter that was trying to chase him, which is interesting because Chuck Jones actually makes a cameo in Gremlins, so they clearly had some influences there. Um, and it's kind of an old archetype. You have the hunter who is trying to bring order to and subjugate nature, and you have this trickster character in Bugs or Daffy that ridicules and, and undermines his attempts. Um, and the funny thing is that I kind of left Gremlins feeling like the Gremlins were the heroes. And in that sense, Gremlins, just like these old Looney Tune cartoons, is really a celebration of, of chaos. Um, you know, if you look at Kingston Falls, where Gremlins is set, there's a lot of things that indicate that everything is not right and kind of deserves to be upset. Um, the biggest thing is that the main villain that's established before the Gremlins show up is Mrs. Deagle who's this, you know, unforgiving land owner, and she gets her comeuppance at the hands of the gremlins. So I don't know. I don't want to stretch the argument too far, but I do think that gremlins is kind of a metaphor for the necessity of art or kind of a manual for how art should function in a society. Um, so I want to talk about why art is important in this way. I want to talk about why we need art. And this could be the first part of a series. I think the role that art plays in any, any society is really complex and there are a lot of answers as to why we need art. So consider this one of the reasons. This is art as chaos. Um, I recently finished a book by The Economist, Tyler Cohen, called The Complacent Class, and I would highly recommend reading it. Cohen argues that the United States um, used to be very dynamic, inventive, and creative, and that over the last several decades, most of our energies have been redirected into maintaining our comfort. We don't move around as much as we used to. We don't innovate as much as we used to. And overall, we're just less open to change. Um, we like the way that things are, and Americans still work hard, but we work hard to preserve the status quo um, more than we ever have. Um, one of the great examples he points out in this regard is the airline industry. You know, sure, there have been innovations, but if you look at the basic technology of the planes themselves, they're really unchanged um, since like the 60s. We we're flying in the same technology that we used in the 60s. If you think about it, this is the equivalent to like an episode of Mad Men and you have Don Draper flying in a biplane. Um, it just, there was so much more of a radical change kind of that first half of the 20th century than, than the second half. Uh, and Cohen has lots of other data to, to use as evidence that looks more broadly at our society and economy. But he's making this argument that we're kind of just running on autopilot. Our society is becoming more and more focused on comfort and complacency, and that can be a dangerous thing. So if we take that down to the human level, what does that look like? How does complacency and comfort affect our bodies? What is the consequence of valuing comfort above everything else? Well, we eat what we want. We use cars as prosthetic devices. We cut ourselves off from social contact with Netflix and social media. And what we get is an epidemic of heart disease, diabetes, depression, and drug abuse. It's no coincidence that the sicknesses of comfort have risen along with the increasing complacency of our society. So what is the solution? The solution that Gremlins and Cohen suggest is chaos. Um, but it's important to know what the chaos is doing. 
Um, and there's a technical term for this um, that I just learned. It's called hormesis. And I was introduced to this idea from uh, Nassim Taleb in his book, Anti-Fragile, which is another book I highly recommend. So basically, hormesis means stressing a system in such a way that the system responds by getting stronger. Uh, hormesis for the body means stressing your body in such a way that the stress causes your body to compensate and become stronger. You know, exercise is the classic example of hormesis, but you could also say like fasting, like fasting has been shown to be the stressor that makes your body stronger. Um, you know, you exercise and exercise literally damages your body. And in response, your body gets stronger and you get healthier. Um, on the societal level, we need hormesis to stay healthy as well. And this is where chaos comes in. And this is why we need art. The purpose of art in this sense is to upset the status quo and to keep us from being comfortable. Um, so, you know, when we look at the world, what are the assumptions we have about the way the world works? What are our assumptions about the way it should work? And then, you know, creating chaos begins with asking this question, what games can you play to upset those assumptions? Another way to think about it is to ask the question, how can I use this tool in a way that it wasn't intended? And by tool, this can mean any convention, any system, any tradition, but it can also mean you know actual tools, actual things that, that we use. Um, and I don't think this necessarily means being violent or mean or careless. To the contrary, you can ups upset people's expectations in really pleasant, charming, kind of uplifting ways. Uh, I was recently watching an episode of the Joe Rogan podcast and um, had Duncan Trussell on as a guest. And Duncan talks about this idea of the Cacophony Society, which I'll, I'll include a link to the video. It's worth seeing his description um, and kind of his like excitement about it. Um, but the word they use in the Cacophony Society is culture jamming. I mean, we have to have some assumptions and expectations about society just to make it through our day to day. It's essential in order to survive. There's so much information and so much, you know, detail going on around us that we kind of need some very simple ways uh, to manage getting through the, the day to day. And those are kind of our conventions. That's how we kind of get through. Like we really need to run on autopilot a certain degree just to, to survive. The danger of this, of course, is that we are becoming accepting and complacent with things that are wrong or that could be better. Culture jamming just means taking these assumptions we have and playing with them, challenging them, and upsetting them. And it can actually have a positive psychological effect as well. There's this idea um, in psychology of, I think the word is the default network, default mode network, network mode, something like that. We just have this default mode in our thinking and this kind of default mode is like really highly correlated with depression. And it just, it just means that our thinking has patterns. Our thinking just gets into patterns that we just are very comfortable with. But when those patterns are upset, it can be really healthy for the mind as well. Um, so, and, and really um, things like Improv Everywhere, if you're familiar with Improv Everywhere and flash mobs are kind of all outgrowths of, of this type of movement where you try to do something in an unexpected way that kind of surprises people. I mean, as an example, one of the classic things they did was they would all dress up as Santas and go to a, a department store and just start handing people stuff off the shelves as presents. You know, and just really confuse people like, oh, do I still need to check this out? Do I still need to buy this or is this mine now? Um, and eventually they all got arrested. Um, one of the other really hilarious examples, Duncan Trussell has an, a friend, I should know this comedian's name, but anyway, he would just made this sign that said Whole Foods coming soon and put it on the fence of an abandoned lot. I think it's just super interesting and it's this way of just playing with people and it's kind of hoaxy. Um, and now if I were younger, I think it'd be really fun to do more stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's an excuse. Maybe I should still go do stuff like that. Um, but the other way I think it's useful to, to cause chaos is to start looking for ways to make change without asking permission. And this is why I really love tactical urbanism. You know, tactical urbanists go out and just paint a bike path on a street or create parks out of parking lots by like adding seating and, and shade. Or they go plant trees or gardens in kind of just unclaimed areas of space. 
And I'll include a link in here of a really cool story of tactical urbanism and how it kind of caused like real change. Um, I'm adding lots of links in this video. Um, but this is also why I love things like self-publishing. I mean, if you want to make art, make art. Find a way. Stop waiting for a degree or a publisher or someone else to give you permission or approval to make a statement. Um, and I don't want to give the sense at all that this is about tearing down society. I'm not recommending anarchy. I mean, even in Gremlins, the time came where things had to return to normal. Uh, at the end of the day, the Gremlins had to go. Kingston Fall had to clean up and has to return to business as usual. And hopefully they're a little bit healthier um, after, after the chaos. I think this is more like giving society a flu shot. So there's two ways you can gain immunity to the flu. One is to have the flu, and the other one is to get a flu shot. And I think most of us would agree that a shot in the arm is much preferable than dealing with the actual flu. So in that way, art is kind of like a flu shot. We're upsetting society. We're stressing it, but just a little bit, just the right amount to make it healthy. Um, so what's the alternative if we don't make art, if we don't give society a shot in the arm? What does that look like? Well, we've already seen that. When you don't address the problems in society and let them build up without fixing them, you end up with revolution and you end up with war. You get Bolsheviks, you get the guillotine. You get world wars and you get famines and you get um, huge amounts of suffering. And here's the thing. The revolutions and the wars, they technically fix the problem. You know, think of all these problematic institutions that went away um, after these revolutions and wars. You know, no more nobility, no more serfs, no more kings, no more state-sponsored religions in any, any meaningful sense. But it came at a really horrible cost. So the hope is by embracing chaos, by being willing to upset the status quo, by being willing to take big risks, go on adventures, challenge the way we do things, we can stir things up and bring back some of the dynamism and energy and creativity that will keep us from settling into complacency and comfort. So what I want to ask you to do is, you know, you can't do this in every area of your life. You need a little bit of stability, but maybe there's one area of your life. There's like one place that you can think of where you can cause chaos. You know, try to find that place and try to build up a little bit of courage and try to just inject a little bit of chaos into society around you. Um, society is always at risk of stagnation and sickness. Art is one of the tools we have to keep that from happening. And I hope we keep all struggling to make that happen. Like I said, that's one reason we need art. Why else do you think we need art? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please like this video. Please subscribe. And we'll talk to you next time.